Ricky Gervais, do you mention I'm with us? Carl Dilkington. Can't. <laughs> this is the worst chair I've ever sat on. And I've sat on some fucking chairs in my life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, are we started? One, one. Are we ready? Are we recording? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. All right. Hello and welcome to a brand new series. Oh. What? It's ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was getting it. I was getting it all fired up. Excited and motivated. What are you talking one, about? One, 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 one. Just seems a bit loud. That. Well, well, you should have sorted that out. Look at that. Look at this, Carl. This is a shambles. This mate. is a. People have paid good money for this. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, are we ready now? Yeah. I think well, come back here then. We're doing a podcast. You dopey bald twat. <laughs> What are, are you doing? Right, go on. We'll just have to deal with it. What no. are you up to? Like, fucking Davros. Hello? Yeah. I'll just, I'll just sit like that. Right, okay, ready? So it was your problem. Oh, Jesus. It's just this carpet. Right. right, ready? Yeah. Hello, welcome to a brand new series of The Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais. Hello. St well, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was so excited to say hello. Okay, right, okay. Hello and welcome to a brand new series of the Ricky Gervais Show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And the little round-headed shaven chimp that is Carl Pilkington. All right. The boys are back in town. What concerns me, is this the tail end of the last series of podcasts or is this a brand new comeback? What I mean is, is this take that when Robbie Williams had left, they sort of limped on with a couple more songs and then called it an end? Or is this the triumphant return of take that? This is, I mean, no, I, I think we're a sort of, we're like a, a, a great rock group who's just been away for a couple of years doing their, their fifth album. Right. Is it the fifth? The mediocre well, fifth album. The media, yeah. We've done, hold on, one, two, three series. We did the specials, which is like a fourth series. Yeah, this is like the, this is like the fifth series. Here it is, the fifth series of podcasts. Although we can't call it podcasts because, um, they're audiobooks because we're charging for them. We're not even giving away free first, then charge for them because, um, in the past we've given away free. Oh, and then we put them on iTunes, the back catalogue. You can, you can buy them. If you missed out on the last year when they were free for a year, now you can pay a pound. People are c complaining. Last time we gave it away for free, like a year later we sort of put it up there. People can buy it. They're going, oh, this was once free. Well, yeah, it was once free. So we did our bit. We gave it to you for free and now we're charging for everybody to get, you should have bought it for free. I can, we can't do anymore. If everyone did that, I mean, it would just be a better world, wouldn't it? Give it away for free, maybe, and then charge for it if you're too late. So we're not even going to give this one away for free, because they, they annoyed us, didn't they, Carl? Yeah, a little bit. Um, well, uh, we actually did a bit of planning for this as well. We thought, we're going straight to a paid audiobook. Let's plan it. Let's not just come in here and shambles. We've booked a studio. We're in a nice little studio in West London. Our own little... It's all to ourselves, isn't it? Yeah, we just look right, at the right. chairs. Look at the chairs. Yeah, Steve didn't get a good chair, but yeah, well, yeah, I got a rubbish chair. Look how big I am. I have a giant sat on a like a kiddie's chair, <laughs> and you've got look at you. You're almost half asleep, as usual, Carl. You, I don't know why you need a good chair. What do you mean? I do, why do you need a good comfy chair? Look how you're sat. This, this is you can be perched on a stool. You can be perched on a box. Is, why don't we swap chairs? Well, why do you want to, what's wrong with you? Cause it's, look at it! Is this how you normally behave? You always get your own way at home. Is this how it is? Yes, oh. in my house I do normally sit in a chair that I find comfy. Will you be happy if I was to swap chairs? Yes, I I had to get him a special chair. I bought some chairs for the office. I bought them. He went, oh, don't like this one. So I went and got him another one. It was actually cheaper than the one he had. He said, yeah, I like that more. Well, there you are. That's a lovely happy ending. You ended up saying. I money. didn't give him a happy ending. I did not give him a happy ending. He just sat there and we worked. There was no happy ending. Did you get this? Will you be happy? I think I would be happy. What do you mean certainly. think? It's like Goldilocks. Are you going to be happy with this or not? <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you let me try it on for size and see how we how we get on? This is. I feel guilty charging for this. <laughs> well, let's just, just try it. How's that, sir? Is that okay? That's a nice chair, actually. Well, you're going to move the chair, so you're going to sit. Oh, no, it's the whole dynamic. No, I'm going to move the chair. Don't yeah, worry. Yeah, you got to. I can't. You can't. It's got to be me and Steve one side, and the little round twonk the other. Okay. <laughs> Right, okay, we're gonna start any minute now. We had a little cup of coffee. There's some Kit Kat in the fridge, isn't there? Right. We thought we'd feed Carl a little Kit Kat later. Because he's like, he's there, he's sort of pressing the buttons, he's keeping an eye on the computer and everything. And it's like a doctor. He, a doctor doesn't swab his own forehead. So what I'll do is I'll get a little Kit Kat later, I'll dunk it in Carl's um, tea, and then I'll feed him a little Kit Kat. Look forward to that. 
Yeah. Mm. How fussy was Carl as well with the tea? He talks about oh. you with the chairs. He was looking what tea bags they were. I went, oh, PG tips. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's a bit right. strong, PG. I can't believe you've got favourite tea bag. What's your favourite tea bag? Twinings, English breakfast. Can you really tell the difference? Yeah, I can. I've done like a little test on it because my mate was saying, oh, it's rubbish, it's all in your head. Mm. And he had a selection of tea bags. <laughs> uh, we had nothing else going on. He said, right, what I'm going to do, I'm going to make three teas. And he used Tetley PG Twinings. Oh, straight okay. away I got the Twinings, straight away. Party oh, time. Like, yeah. Party time in the Pilgrim household. Oh, man, I like Oh, it. where was this? How old were you? Oh, it was just going back a, a few months. I was like, uh, I was like a Jilly Goulden. Just sort of, uh, having a little- you can tell by the smell of a PG. Cause it's strong tea, that. Mm. Very strong. Uh, Twinings is quite, uh, fresh and light. <laughs> Uh, Tetley was just the one in the middle. Can they get their money back? If they have paid for this, can they get their money back and I just love the money back. illegally download it with the this people that- This isn't for the thing, is it? We're just having a chat. Oh, we can tell, like, like the tea bags, we can tell the quality podcasting from the rubbish, can we? We'll take this out. If this is still in, then it didn't go well. <laughs> <laughs> right then. So, uh, let's start now. Let's, let's start. Let's right. concentrate. Um, so, episode one, I thought what we'd do, um, is- Maybe go over some of the things that have happened since we met, as it's the final series. We met in about 2002. I thought we could think of how the world's changed in those, uh, seven years. Six, yeah. seven years. Well, certainly, uh, the big news is the endless threat of terror. Terror, the war on terror. That had, that had kicked in when we met Carl all those years ago. Well, I walked into that room. We were given this little, what, what I, at first I thought was a little slack-jawed chimp, gimp, sort of techno kid. It turned out that he wasn't very technical either. Didn't even have that. No, didn't even have that, just a gimp. And he opened his mouth and we thought, we've struck gold here. This is like a, a vein of uh, pure idiocy. Um, so that was going on. Uh, podcast hadn't been invented. That's new, isn't it? You were very much a pioneer, if you don't mind me saying, Rick. Thanks, mate. The iPod, we've talked about the iPod, um, Carl not impressed, I think it's a, just an amazing piece of design. No, it is, it's good. Yeah. I've always said it's, it's, it's good, now I've got one. I was listening to it on the way here. Yeah. But all I'm saying is- How many songs have you got on it? Cause you said there's only about three songs you'd want to hear. Well what I've, uh, I've probably got about, we've got about 400 on it now. That's right. Um, but there's no, there's no sort of filler, I don't just go putting full albums on it. No. I hand pick. Yeah. Um, but what's odd is I find that I'm sort of buying stuff that I wouldn't normally buy if it was only on record, which is good but bad, because I've, yeah. I've got a lot of clutter now. Do you know what I mean? Well, you said you haven't. You said you haven't got a filler. So I thought you were cherry picking. No, but what I'm saying is, like, yesterday I bought some Dr. Hook. <laughs> <laughs> when was the last time anyone thought, I'll tell you what I haven't heard for a while, Dr. Hook? <laughs> well, I, I heard it and I thought, oh, I used to like that one. My mum used to have that one when she was doing a Sunday dinner. I thought, I like what that. What one? What did she used to have on? Dr. Hook. What, every, every Sunday? Well, it's just, uh, that's the memory I've got of it. I'm cooking the turkey, put the Dr. Rook on. It just, it just always on, uh, and some other country western singer. My mum was Jim Reeves, she always put Jim yeah, Reeves on. Yeah, she liked on. Jim Reeves. Yeah, I like Jim Reeves. Um, my parents didn't like music, silence. Oh, no. <laughs> my it was, constantly, <laughs> never put record on. Oh, wow. Um, Su on. At our house, Suzanne, it does her head in when she comes round to my mum and dad's house, because there's music on in every room, all different. <laughs> and my mum's got into this fella <laughs> called, uh, Roger Fender, or something. Some country western singer. And it's on all the time on loop, the same song. She said the sheep across the road has started to sort of hum to it. It's on that much. Brilliant. Think of looking over and seeing some sheep humming. No, he's Roger just, Fender or whoever he is. I, I don't, I, I think that's his name. But, uh, but yeah, so I've bought some Dr. Hook. Yeah. And, and what I'm saying what is- What did you buy? What Dr. Hook did you buy? It's called, um, who's called? If Not You, it's called. Oh yeah, good. Yeah. And, uh, I wouldn't have bought that if- if I had to go to a record shop and- Well, no, it wouldn't be available. <laughs> They'd go, what are you talking about, mate? Have you got that one by- Mate, can you leave the store? Well, yeah, but that's a good thing, isn't it, now that you're being opened up to a whole different- Yeah, uh, but it's that thing of, of just- That's buying what excites me most, exactly. the back catalogue, yeah. that you can- yeah, Without yeah. trying it's, to go it's in good, into it. A... But I'm just saying that, that's what happens, isn't it? If you've got a space for something, you fill it. And that's the problem. If my, if my iPod wasn't an iPod and it was a cassette, Dr. Rook wouldn't be on it. He wouldn't feature. He wouldn't be on the cassette. Elvis what? would be. Yeah. Uh, Just the big boys. What's wrong with having a space and filling it? I mean, there's a space between your ears, we'd love to fill that, but... Um, just because... 
is stuff is normally stuff you don't need if you've got too much space and you're filling it. It's like Ricky's house. You've got stuff in there now that you want to add in a smaller flat. You've got dead owls and stuff like that. But dead owls? Why are you buying dead owls? No, it's an antique thing. It's an antique stuffed owl, and I was assured it died of natural causes of old age. Yeah, and then sure. Yeah, it looked in good nick. It didn't look yeah. or, upset. But dead owls suggest that they just fly into the room and I just leave them there. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Like they crack their head. But what, on, you're on just sat in your uh, dressing gown constantly drinking yeah. gin. Oh, uh, Jay, there's another dead owl. <laughs> Clean up. Feed it to the cup. Feed it to the puma. But that's what I'm saying. I haven't got room for a, I haven't got room for a live owl. Never mind a dead one. <laughs> so that's the difference and that's the same with an iPod, isn't it? With an iPod, because you've got so many gig... You go, what will I have? Well, yeah, but Ricky's not, s- Ricky's not sat at home looking at an empty space in his flat thinking, I need to fill that with something. I think he would be. What would be there? If that dead owl wasn't there, what would you put there? But you've picked on one thing. You've picked on one Well, that's all you small... can do. I'm just picking on an example. What else do you want me to pick? I'm just saying, I have not got room for a dead owl. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd never look at one in a shop. I'd go, I can't, I'm not going to buy that because I haven't got the space for it. But why are you obsessed with, like, someone trying to press you into getting this dead owl? I, wonder, I, I mean, it, it seems a weird thing to shout, I have not got space for a dead owl. No, but if I, say if I had an urge to see a dead owl. Right. Natural History Museum, loads of them. Right. I've never seen one and gone, oh, I wish I didn't have to go to the museum, I want one in my house. <laughs> that to me is like, right, Suzanne, have we got everything? Have we got a dishwasher? Yeah. Washer dryer? Yeah. Ironing board? Yeah. Right. There's a bit of space there, is there anything you want? Then, if it's like, dead owl? Alright, we've got the room for it. But the way we're, the way we're living now, we've definitely not got room for, for a dead owl. That's all, that's all I was saying, and to me, a dead owl, I, I'd like this to be part of, um, estate agent's patter. <laughs> um, there's a lovely space there for, uh, you can fit in about seven dead owls. They, they, they don't know about square footage anymore. It's, uh, 6,000 dead owls. Um, you idiot. Well, um, yeah, I'm still not convinced by this idea of, uh, this space has got to be filled. You know, people aren't, it's not, people just choose to buy things and fill up their house with those things because they, they give them pleasure. It's Most what, things we've got are junk. If, if you didn't have junk, all you'd have, is a, a, a cooker, um, a, a bath, um, maybe a sink, a bed, and that would be it. That anything else, a, a television, isn't necessary, is it? You seem to think that people should live like, you know, kind of 19th century mining communities. Well, no, but they, <laughs> like, a few years ago, people worked this out, didn't they? They all went minimalistic. Because they Say said- Say what? Say what? Minimalistic. So one more time. Minimalistic. No. No. What, the, what's, what letter are you starting with in that word? M. Okay. Where are you going on from there? Mi- minimum. Well, it must be mi- it must be minimum. Yeah. So that's what that minimalistic. 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 No, 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 no. You're well, pop- you know what I mean. No, no, wait. You're popping in an M where there should be an N. Minimalistic. You put in two M's when there should be one M, right? Minimalistic. Mi- minimalistic. Yes. Wow. Well, woo. Right. Well, thanks for listening, everyone. <laughs> that's so... the end of the uh, the first episode. <laughs> it's gone well. Um, so anyway, a couple of years back, everyone went. Yeah, that was that was the that was the trend, wasn't it? But we've gone back to being clutter clutteristic. The way I live, like I've said to you before, it's the old three month rule. If something's not used over three months, chuck it out because it's not needed. So suitcases. What was the that? Yeah, suitcase. No, he uses a suitcase every two weeks. He's off all the time. Yeah. Uh, most stuff, most stuff, at clothes. I'll well, go. if you don't wear a piece of clothing in three months, it's gone. Well, why haven't I wore it in three months? Well, because maybe it's a, a uh, it's a suit or a tuxedo and you've not no, made many fancy balls. I don't have any clothes like that. I wear the same things anyway. I throw clothes away every three months because I get too fat for them. <laughs> so, you know. But it does seem to me the way you talk, it's like you want to live, as I say, like some kind of 19th century pauper with a big tin bath in the lounge in the one room in your house and all the family bathe in it. And yet you wouldn't be happy with well, that, Well, maybe, maybe. You? Well, I've told you before about that's, that's something I said when I was younger. What? What did you say? When I was younger, um, I think, uh, I was having a bath or something. And I said to me, mum, oh, remember when I was in, like, that tin bath in front of the fire? Yeah. She went, what? And, yeah. now that's strange, isn't it, that you're saying I'd be happier with that back then? So it's like that was my past life. Well, hang on, hang whoa, on. We haven't finished whoa, yet. Whoa, 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 whoa. What your, do you mean? Your mum, your mum said what you're talking about. You said how old were you? I uh, must have been a kid if I'm having a bath and my mum sat there. Well, yeah. Well, I don't know how you operate. I assume you were, but how old? Must have had time to have a bath. As you get older, you don't have as much time, do you? 
So I'd say five. I love the fact that after five he didn't have time for the bar. <laughs> no, he's, he's so busy. Carl, we've read your diary. One day it was simply went to the cobblers and back. No, but so you had time to have about nineteen bars. No, but as you get older, you sort of go. I haven't got time to sit in a bath. Whereas a kid, it's something to do. You're like staring at ants. When have you ever been too busy to have a bath? One, you're never busy. Two, how can you be too busy to wash? It's like saying too busy to eat. Breathe. Got to breathe last night. Why? I had a bit of work to do. What point are you making? So I'm just saying- This you is not an anecdote. You said that- that I'd be happier back in 1800s or whatever. But what are you- yeah. so, what are you saying that you didn't really have a bath in front of the fire? You yeah, mean I this might... was a glimpse of a past life is yes. what you think? Yes. This is- you, this is th just such a non-point. <laughs> this is just nothing. This is- this, if you'd said, well then I went off to see one of those people who regresses you, and although it was a load of old bollocks, he regressed me and it turns out I was the king of Sheba. I love those things, people. Everyone thinks they've lived before, right? Mm. Did I tell you that, um, there was a, a documentary, um, about these people in, um, uh, Los Angeles that, that they'd lived before and they'd come back and, and, uh, they did, they did a, a come as you were party. So they went as the people in their previous life. All of them famous. Of course they were. Kings, queens, uh, leaders of men. Not as I was a stable hand, I forget my name. Right, ever, two Napoleons, one of them's lying. <laughs> I mean, it, absolute twaddle. <laughs> we we're talking about things that have, uh, happened since we met. We've, uh, we've done podcasts and we've done the iPod, we've dismissed that. Um, See, Carl, when he disses all these great inventions and design, where he says you don't need them, it's just faffing, what he means is he's a little bit annoyed that no one's picked up on his ideas, like the clippable mat for the mug, or, uh, I don't know, c cat mops, I don't know, it wasn't yours, nor was the tie, was it? The stupid tie. What's that? What's the one about the tie? Um, The tie that had a pocket. <laughs> Loads of pockets. But I didn't come up with that, that's something I, I saw somewhere, but it never caught on. I've never seen anyone wearing one yet. It's such a good. It's not a good idea. It's it like a having a idea. carrier bag round your neck. It doesn't make any sense. It's a tie <laughs> packed with stuff. You want right, imagine. All right, stuff. Frank. Nice tie. What you got in there? Baguette. Um, <laughs> just ridiculous. But imagine the day that the tie was invented. There you go. Do you want a tie? What do you do with it? Put it round your neck. What for? Um, don't know. Well, I tell you. What? Uh, because you haven't invented buttons yet, and it keeps your shirt together at the top. Well, all right then. Right. Uh, we've invented buttons. Are we going to stop making these ties? No. Why? <laughs> He's got you there, Rick. There you go. Now, I'm saying, what are you doing with that tie around your neck? Oh, it's a pocket tie. It's a what? It's a pocket tie. What do you mean? It's got pockets in it. Oh, that's weird. What are you so doing? I've got pockets in my jacket. Yeah, no, but, but, hang on, hang on a minute. It's a hot day, innit? Don't want to put your jacket on. Oh, or a tie. <laughs> well, if you're going to wear a jacket, wear a tie. Leave the no, jacket I'm not wearing on. a jacket. I'm wearing a shirt. Got give, a nice it, give it a purpose. If you're going to wear something, give it a purpose. Everything has a purpose. <laughs> a tie at the moment is just round your neck, keeping you hot. If you're gonna be hot, carry something. Hands free. And everything's always there. A bag, you put stuff in a bag, you put a bag down, you forget it. I always forget bags, that's why I don't like carrying them. You pop it down, you get up, you walk off, oh, where's the bag? A tie, when you go in a cafe or something for beans on toast, you don't take your tie off. I don't wear a tie. I would if it had pockets. Go! The country would look smarter. Right, you have pockets, so what are you carrying in this pocket? I have got a spare change. Yeah, okay. Which, uh... You're rattling around like a, like a cow in Switzerland, right. just like... I've got a spare change, I've got, uh, like my debit card in there. Right. Uh, maybe got me little front door key in one of the pockets. Okay. A uh, pair of scissors if you want. Amazing. <laughs> that's whatever. safe, isn't it? Oh, that's a, a good of, place to put it, just around the heart area. <laughs> yeah, and the, near the throat. <laughs> yeah. Facing upwards. Brilliant. Carl, think what you're saying. So when, you, when you're on the beach and you just got your speedos on, <laughs> pop a tie on, go to the shop and pop a tie on. Well, no, you wear it in the appropriate times, but I'm just saying if you're going to wear a tie, let's make it useful. Let's give it a purpose. Don't wear a tie. It's alright. You do not need a tie with pockets. If you're wearing a tie, You've got clothes with pockets. And it's gonna be weighing your neck down if- I mean, come on, don't, don't go mad. If you're carrying anything big, you buy the scarf version. Er, <laughs> <laughs> uh, what else has happened since we met? 2002. Um, gay marriages. That's, uh, that's kicked in. Mm. Thoughts? Yeah, they've happened. Are yeah. they popular though? I mean... Well, amongst gay people who want to get married, they're very popular, I imagine. What's the point of it? You know, I suppose they want to feel that 
There's an equality. But is it just one of them things where they wanted it because they can't have it? Do you know uh, what I mean? I think any excuse for a fancy dress. They like, they like to dress up. They love a press tent. See, I just don't understand that. What's it? I mean, who gets, whose name do they use? Whose surname do they go with? I don't know. There's a problem. Just creating problems. I always say that. Any problem solved is a new problem made. <laughs> <laughs> Gobbledygook. <laughs> oh, any that. problem solved is a new problem made. Yeah. Like I said that time when I was in hospital, and, uh, you know, I remember in the 80s everyone was going, oh, there's not enough hospital beds and all that. When I was in hospital with, uh, what's it, kidney stones. Yeah. Um, loads of beds, not enough pillars. So that's the way it works. It sorted out the bed problem. <coughs> they give me a bed at night. I was going, I haven't got a pillar. He had to go off and get one. He brought it back. It was still warm. Oh. <laughs> that had been between a... Under a bed head. So that's what I'm saying. It's kind of like, you, you get all the beds, new problem. Where's the pillars? <laughs> Don't solve problems. Don't solve problems. Brilliant. What do you make of the, um, this big problem in the church? Not wanting, uh, gay people to be priests. Does that concern you? No. No? <laughs> it's a problem if you're gay, and it's a problem if you go to church and you don't like gays, but I, I don't go to church, and I'm not gay. There's certain problems that just go over your head. If you were gay, Carl, what would you do? I'll do what all gays do, I suppose. What, the, what what's that? Whatever it is they do. I'm just saying. Well, well, you can just say what if well, you Well, I'm not gay, so I don't, I don't know. So, um, getting uh, gay marriage. Um, would you uh, ever go through with that? What if I was gay? Well, it's hard to answer, isn't it? How can I answer it if I'm not gay? I don't know what I'd do. Well, no, I might no, not okay. look like this. I'd look totally different if I was gay. Why? Even though it's me mum's what's it, me dad's jeers or whatever. You still, I'd still, I'd look different, because gays do, you make more of an effort. Look at me. I wouldn't survive as a gay man. Maybe that's why I'm not one. <laughs> right, why? Carl, I'm gonna give you a scenario though, okay? I'm gonna, I'm gonna test. Um, would you rather, so you're not gay, okay, this is the real you, right? Um, uh, someone put a gun to your head and goes, right, okay, Carl, you've either got a married little gay fella, there's a little fella here, he, he loves you, he's liked you for a long time, he goes, Hello, Carl. You go, all right, mate. He's a lovely bloke. Um, I think he's, he lives in Brighton. I think he's in advertising. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got a surprising. sports car. He's, he's smart. He looks lovely. Um, pink shirt, white suit. He's great. He's very popular. He's got tints. It always looks good. Mm. Right. Lo lovely tan. Um, he's about 38. What's his name? Uh, his name is Graham. Oh. Yeah. What's he expecting um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and he goes, hello, Carl. And you go, all right, Graham. And he goes, and someone suddenly bursts in and goes, right. You've either got a Mary Graham, he puts a gun to your head, he goes, right, you've either got a Mary Graham, okay, you've got to tell all your family. Well, you... no, I'm not going to marry him, am I? What, whoa, 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 you know all the choices. Well, I know, I know one of the choices, and I'm not happy with that choice, so you go with whatever else. Well, no. So what's the other option, Rick? Well, okay, so you marry, you marry Graham and you yeah, do- I'll be marrying Graham. You do all the things in the bedroom. Why is that happening? Well, you're married now. You're married now, and he wants to consummate that. He loves Even you. under marriage, you can't do that, can you? You can say, hang on a minute. Well, no. Well, I, don't, I don't know why you've married Graham. No, but you, you want him to be him. happy. You want him to be happy. He's giving you a lovely house. Yeah, but I'd say, Graham, hang on a minute. You know the score. I'm not into this. No, I went he along with no. it because you didn't want a bullet in your head. No. <laughs> now, if you love me, will you stop doing that? <laughs> stop doing what? What are you doing in the bedroom? Well, no, just, uh, you know, you have a lovely life. You do your own thing. You do this, right? Podcast, do your little books and that. Little, um, you know. Uh, and, uh, Graham goes off, he does his, and he, he comes back, he goes, oh, I've had a day. He goes, what's the matter, Graham? And you go, you just sort of massage him, he's just like, you go, uh, oh. I'll go with the other option. Well, wait, Carl! So you're going, oh, God, oh, he's, I've made you some pork chop. He goes, oh, you're a darling, right? It wouldn't work, though, because you're wait, putting wait. two people together who don't want to be together. Well, Graham wants to be with you. Yeah, Graham yeah, loves you. Relationship's two way, innit? And I, yeah. I, and I don't, I mean, this is a made up man, and I know I don't like him. <laughs> That's just homophobic. <laughs> no, it's not. He's annoying me. Why? He's a little yeah, bit Why are you annoying well, you? Just the way he looks after his body. Yeah. I'm saying he's tanning it, he's having yeah. a massage, and I wouldn't be doing all that, so it wouldn't last. The relationship yeah, wouldn't work. He's talking to you, he's talking to you. No, it doesn't work. Opposites attract, okay? Not to and that point, it doesn't. He's good to you, uh, He's really, though, he, he, he's, oh god, he's, he's faithful. Um. He's got a good job. He's got a really good job. Um. You get invited to really nice parties. It's just him. I don't like him. 
Well, oh, you he's he's no, that's a, a shame. He, he absolutely he's loves you. That's he's such a happens, funny doesn't it? It happens that I remember right. being at school with a girl who really liked me, and I was yeah. like, "It's not going to happen, Sharon." No, no, no. It the, happen. the first, the first, the first. And that's day. Sharon, not Graham. <laughs> so the chances of me letting this Graham move in. <laughs> well, you've moved in with him, right? He's got a lovely, bigger, mm. got a six-bedroom house. Of course he is. And, um, you, you move in with him, right? So the first day you go, oh, I'm not happy with this, because you're thinking, oh my god, it's a, oh god, first day in marriage, where's it gonna go? He goes off, he gives you a peck on the What's head. What's the option? Well, What's wait! What's the other choice? Well, you don't know! Yeah, okay. So he comes home, he goes, oh, he's bought you a lovely little ankle bracelet. Oh, that's with, sweet of With Carl. Right. Carl, Carl, love. Graham, I need a word. <laughs> I go, what is it? What's, what's up, love? <laughs> <laughs> what's the matter? Go, I'll be, look, I'll be Graham. Right, okay. I'll be Graham. What's the matter? You look tense. This is all, uh, it's, we're living a lie, yeah? <laughs> well, yeah, but it's just the alternative is so much worse. What's the alternative? Uh, well, uh, what is the alternative, Rick? I think we're all waiting for that. Well, marry a chimp. <laughs> marry a chimp yeah unless you either live with a chimp in a tree or marry graham your family are going to get killed they're going to someone's going to shoot them right so you have to decide what you want to do do you want to go and live in a tree with a chimp and eat nothing but bananas and just live the chimp world okay yeah or woo graham you go down there you're chatting to him you're in a you're just in a, a club right you're there. But right. who's watching that I'm staying with Whoever this evil person, uh, person is. is right, yes, yeah, yeah. Well, but where's he watching from? The, the evil, the evil person's going, right, he goes to that club, Saturday nights. Don't, don't bother going before midnight. He won't be there. Right, so you get there, you walk in there, it's 1am, and he goes, that's him over there, in the pink shirt, dancing. Okay? Right, he, would, he wouldn't like me. <laughs> he would. You go, no, you go, well, this uh, is it, you've got to win him over. Look at you! Look at your lovely shaved head, hairy arms. Oh my god. I mean, you are more suited to the chimp, but no, you'll go down a storm, right? You go down there, you've, you've got, you've got a little vest on, leather trousers. What would you say to Graham? You've got back, to go over it. You've no. cut out, you've got a, bought a leather pair of trousers and you've cut out the back, okay? There you go in. Your ass is showing. You've got, you've got a freshly shaved head. You've got a little white vest, okay? Mm. Has he got all this on? Uh, no, he's got, uh, he's got like a little pink Ben Sherman, uh, white trousers and, uh, espadrilles. Right, I dance over. Yeah. I can yeah. say, uh, are you Graham and go, yeah. Oh, hello. Who are you? I say, never mind, you haven't seen a chimp about, have you? <laughs> <laughs> hello, welcome to episode two of the Ricky Gervais show with me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello there. And Carl Pilkington. Hi. Oh, yeah, I just, I just. I just feel bad about Graham. I feel sorry for no, don't, Graham. Don't feel sorry for well, Graham. Well, he was a nice guy and he's, he. Absolutely. She was so badly treated. Took you into his home, it was gonna give you everything, and you just didn't appreciate, and was saving your family's life. And you just... Yeah, I but just... I went, I went for the other option. There's no point, I, all I'd be doing is letting Graham down. And as much as I didn't like him, I don't want to ruin his life. I don't know why you didn't like him. He was just not my type, he was a lovely you know. Guy. He wasn't a lovely guy. He didn't give Why wasn't he a lovely time? guy? Just his, just his ways, you know. I mean, you, you, you bond with some people, you don't with others. That had nothing to do with him. You barely even had a conversation gay. with him. Yeah, but you click straight away with people, don't you? You know, when you meet someone, you go, yeah, they're all right. I'd, it's, it wasn't going to work. If I was to go out with a gay man, Graham wouldn't be the one. Who would be? Who would be? Just someone who wasn't as in your face as him. Well, which just someone? What do you mean in your face? What? Just sort of, you know, just the way he was straight away. I wouldn't go to a club to meet someone like that. I wouldn't. Because I don't like doing that as a straight man. So just because I'm gay, I don't suddenly get into house. Well, if you if you were going to be gay, would you? What gay man would you want to marry? Probably someone who you don't know is gay. I don't know what that means. Someone who's just quiet about it, just get on with it. So if you were gay, you'd like a sort of straight man. No, because that's not going to work either, is it? That was my situation with Graham. But how do you how do you know if how, how would you if you were gay? Why would you approach someone who didn't know was gay? What? So if you're gay, the only gay life you can do is by going to a club where it's a racket at four in the morning and meeting no, someone. No, no. Right then, so that's what who, I'm saying. I'm saying, who would be your ideal partner if you were gay? Who would you like? There'll be someone who I don't know who's gay, innit? I don't know what that means. What do you mean it was someone who don't know Because gay? I wouldn't go out with someone who's really like, oh, hello, and all that with the shirt open, the Why tan. not? Because, <laughs> because that's the equivalent of going out with a woman who's got knickers up her ass <laughs> and 
you know, it's it's a, it's the equivalent. It's the in your face woman and the in your face man. I don't want any of you. <laughs> Well, who do you want? Well, who was your sort of know. guy? Okay, well, just say what your sort of guy is then. Do you want him to be sort of like a man's man, sort of goes, you know, slap? He sort of, like, he, when you go do something, you go, you, you dopey idiot, and he just sort of gives you... No, like, I don't want that. No, you want someone to go, oh, what's the matter with you? Do you want no, yourself better? Well, what do you want? What do you mean that? I'm oh, asking you what you want. Oh, petal. I don't yeah, want what do you want in a man? I'm asking you what the you want. The ones who are just normal, who just talk, they'll go, all right, Carl, how's it going? Yeah, I'm all right, mate, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> right, well, okay. what are we doing tonight? Watching Die Hard, if you want. <laughs> go straight to bed after that, yeah. <laughs> oh, no, he's straight in bed! Done. I love the fact that he went from, like, not being sure to no. just, like, getting a, a man. But not great, it wouldn't be four in the morning. No. I'd be living my life as I am now. Right. But... I'd, I'd be a gay man. Yeah, okay. So Cos I'm me, aren't I? So yeah. that's not gonna change. No. Why would it? No, you, so I'm just trying to- I'm, Carl, all we're trying to establish is what sort of guy you go for. Okay, we've settled that. If, um, sorry about that, um, if any, uh, people feel sorry for Graham, sorry about that, but, um, that's- that settled. What I thought we could do, Carl, um, on this, the, uh, brand new fifth series of the Ricky Gervais Show, we're talking about things that have happened since we met, looking back, what have you learned, where are we going forward from this. Um, I thought we could play uh, Room 101, um, the popular TV show where people cast the things they hate into Room 101 forever. Room 101, of course, is uh, taken from uh, George Orwell's 1984. Mm -hmm. Room of all your fears and terrors. and so. Uh, is there a copyright issue here? Can we uh, steal this idea? Well, yeah. Uh, well, let's play Room 102. Clever. This is the room next door to Room 101, which is worse, in my opinion. Is it? Oh, Winston Smith. He, he'd love to be in Room 101 if he went to Room 101. He'd go, oh, get me back to Room I didn't know, I didn't know where, oh, I, I didn't know I was born. This is much worse. So, Carl, these are things that really annoy you. Don't put in things like, you know, cancer and racism. I mean, that goes without They're saying. They're already in there. They're already in there. All the terrible things in in life here. This is just your little bugbears. The things that really annoy you that, you know. Well, I, I actually did the real show and I put in things like, um, lateness. That's my bugbear. I can't, I can't stand it. I think I put in, um, uh, oh, parents who let their kids run riot. Parents who think that everyone is interested in their kid as much as they are. Um, I remember I was talking about um this this family right they were they were passing the baby around in a restaurant and it was like being sick and they were all shouting about it and I was like oh and uh um and I I got onto oh yeah they were, they were breastfeeding it and at one point I, I I went on a um uh this sort of like digression about a friend of mine who moved to the country and um the woman next door sort of this hippie woman next door about forty. You know, the one of those sort of like long well, grey hair. You know what I mean? I what Shave your mean. legs and yeah. stop wearing flip flops. Yeah. Um, and, uh, they said, oh, we're just neighbours and we brought you round a rice pudding. And they gave my friend a rice pudding. And, uh, she went, oh, it's, um, it's made from breast milk because I'm, I'm still lactating. And I went, thanks very much. And of course they, she went and they threw it away and washed the dish and gave it back to her. And it annoyed me. The arrogance of coming round and saying, uh, it's, uh, rice pudding made my breast milk. The, uh, uh, get out of here, yeah. you dirty hippie. <laughs> Is what? that what you'd have said, though, if she'd arrived at No, your I'd have said, oh, do you know what, I, um, I'm, I'm breast milk intolerant. <laughs> uh, uh, no. Uh, well, I remember, um, the next day, it went out on television, a journalist said, oh, Ricky Gervais, uh, showed, uh, his, uh, misogynist side. No, no, I stand by it. I stand by it. I don't eat strangers' breast milk. <laughs> I said about it, totally natural. Well, it's not okay. Uh, uh, yeah, eyes a cum sandwich. It doesn't matter if it's natural. It's fucking disgusting. Don't make me a rice pudding out of breast milk. You know, I'm, I'm not a fussy eater. Sure, well, you are. Yeah, but no, I know what you mean. You, you surely you draw the line there of a stranger's breast milk. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. No, absolutely. Any kind of jizz plan. Jizz plan, do you know what I mean? That's giving you an example of the sort of thing that one might put into room 102. Yeah. That, uh, people who try and make you eat their breast milk disguised as rice pudding. It's quite a specific fear. Yeah. That one. Uh. Graham. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> he doesn't deserve that. Uh. 
slugs was in there. Slugs. So um, then then, then there's uh, you have to put a case forward, and me and Steve decide whether slugs go in or whether they they stay out, whether they've got a purpose. Why? It's, it's just because I'm having a problem with slugs at the moment. There's a lot of slugs coming in the house. Why? Don't know. I just they can get where like water can't. You know what I mean? Because they, they're boneless, aren't they? So well, any little gap. So is water boneless? There's not many bones in water. No, no, that's what I said. Yeah, but you're saying they can get somewhere the water can't. Yeah, no, they're even more likely to because they sort of move about and that, and they're looking for light. Water's just happy where it is. <coughs> you understand what I'm saying? Why, why banish them all to room 102 slugs? Because they're harmless, aren't they? Yeah, but I also think, I mean, at the end of the day, they're happy wherever. So stick them in room 102. They're not bothering me, and they're happy. They're not bothering well, what no, the room no, is. No, 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 this is a metaphor. Room 102 means they disappear from existence. It's not really a room where you put in slugs with people making rice pudding out of their breast milk. It's not really, it, it, it no. It's not a, you can't rent that room. We are saying, would you take slugs out of existence? That's, that's quite a tough call, isn't it? Because everyone's going to have a go, but I don't know what they do. All I know is, they're clogging up my piping. <laughs> I had to go out and buy a plunger. I hadn't seen them since, like, comics when I was a kid. And I suddenly thought, I need one of them things that I always saw in comics. I, I never thought I'd need one of them in my life. It's 2008. I've got slugs in my pipes. <laughs> so, I went out, three quid it was, I had no idea what the going rate is for a plunger. Where did you go and get one? Where did you- hardware shop around the corner. Uh, so I went round there, I said, have you got a plunger? He said, what size do you want? I said, what size have you got? He said, oh, we've got three different sizes. I said, I'll have the middle one. So that was three quid. And, uh, took it back, gave it a bit of a plunge. Uh, and I think it was slugs, like, all, like, bits of black stuff came up. And I think it was slugs in there, like, what, broken up what, slugs. Well, ha hang on, hang on, hang on, it could've just be black gunk, couldn't no, it? No, no, it looked very sluggish. <laughs> Cause remember, I've had a problem with them anyway, I'll go to the toilet, whatever, look round, there's a slug climbing up the wall out of the shower basin thing. Are you sure it's a slug? Yeah, definitely, definitely slugs, I have to keep chucking them out, cause I don't like killing anything. Right. I, I didn't want to kill the slugs with slug pellets, I bought some copper ribbon. Right, they don't like going over that, they? don't do they? Like that. They, they get, get a little, little charge, charge, yeah. But, now that should be a warning, but instead they're diverting. They've done a diversion, they've gone up the wall and across. <laughs> now it's like, that's a warning. That's like having a no trespassing sign. Yeah. And they're just going, bollocks to that. <laughs> <laughs> and they're getting in, and it's annoying me, and now you get to a point where you do say, well, if they carry on like this, I'll have to kill them because they're not, how, how much- how They're much, not playing by the rules. I don't know what they're doing, I don't know what the purpose is. They just sit there still. I don't see him doing anything. I was lo looking at one close up. Well, had, what do you want to do? Be reading Rusa. What do you want a slug to do? In the same way you see a bee collecting pollen, good. It's doing its little work. But they're, they're Ants carrying big leaves or whatever. But the slugs just sat in They're all the doing kitchen. the same thing. They're all doing the same thing. That slug is out. It's eating. That it's is finding not, food. There's no food. There's no food in our kitchen for a slug. Believe me. There's not enough there for me sometimes. <laughs> but never mind a slug. It's, there's nothing for it. Definitely not in the shower. What's he doing? <laughs> so, I told you ages ago about how the, they cause more problems than good. They eat, they eat cabbage. Right. Um, when they shouldn't be. Um, they get in letter boxes and nick stamps. They don't nick stamps. They eat the stamps. They like the glue on it. Right. Right. Is this a big problem though? <laughs> is there an epidemic of slugs eating stamps? But I think it is, and that's why they're so slow. I think they're sweating glue, and right? It's they're them. eating all them, and 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 that's <laughs> that's why they're sticking to stuff. Have you ever picked up a slug? Well sticky, they give off this glue. It's like that all the glue they've eaten off stamps. They panic, and when they sweat, they sweat glue. Sweat? <laughs> they give a glug, a slug. <laughs> what do you mean they sweat glue? If you're if, making up nature. If you're, if this you, is like Attenborough, but like, made up. If you, when you see a slug, yeah. you prod it, it gets nervous, it wants to run off. But the problem is, because it's sweating glue. It's it, not sweating glue! It makes sense. That is not This is just a nonsense theory. It's just what I've noticed on them. Right, Rick, do you allow slugs in room 102? Well, I just want, I think we should, you know, you know, if, if they're gonna be gone forever, then we should, we should put a case forward. They're amazing creatures. If yeah, you haven't got them in your house, it'd be different. All you've got is people coming around saying you want some rice pudding. That isn't a world problem. That <laughs> wasn't me. Oh, right, right. Whatever it was. Um, no, but they're, they're amazing. They've got two sets of like antennae. The one at the top is for light, 
and the next one is that they can they can smell and get food in the air, just the slightest. What do they do for the world? Their food. If if only it's not good enough. That it's not good enough. What do you mean? But like that's well, that's the ultimate sacrifice. Surely them being food for Who's somebody. Who's eating them? Hedgehogs. Do they like them? Yeah, they love them. They're, yeah, they love slugs. Do they? Yeah. <sighs> the thing is, though, if you're always going to upset someone, aren't you? With anything I put in room. No, you just got to make a reasoned case, and I'm not sure that you've you've, you've argued well enough. I'm just slugs. having problems with them at the moment. I spent three quid on a plunger. And I don't like the idea that every time I get up in the night to go into the toilet or whatever, I've got to put the light on because I might have a bit of sluggage between my toes. Sluggage? <laughs> a little bit of sluggage between my toes? But I mean, you if you're going to put everything in, in your house that causes problems, we're gonna, what else are we going to have here? Um, no, boilers? I'm not, I'm not. It's just, I mean, at the end of the day, you only moan about what's fresh on your mind at the moment. And I haven't, you know, I've got to go to that house and I dread to think what's, how many slugs are going to be stuck to the ceiling and everything. Right, okay, well, so we need to move on. So, you are not putting them in? I'm not putting slugs in. Alright, slugs have not gone in, Carl, I'm afraid. What's your next one? Okay, number two. Um, people who don't want to do what, what the brains would be better at doing. Right, okay, now I'll, I'll get around that sentence. Now, tell me again. Brains that don't want to do what their owners are good at. Ah, so now it's the brain's fault. Before you said you were going to put people in who don't do what their brain's good at, but now you've changed that. Now you're putting the the blame on the brain. Now you want to put in brains who don't want to do what their owners are good at. I like the fact that you own a brain. Okay, no, no, no. I just need a bit more clarification, Rick. Before you ask questions, can you just expand on that point, please, KP? Do you know, like, pe people decide what they want to do. Right. Don't they? For a living. Mm hmm But sometimes they're not good enough. Right. You mean they have a dream and they can't fulfil it because they haven't got the, the, the skill or... Yeah, but that doesn't mean they're not good for anything. No. It's just that they haven't unlocked the thing that they're good at. Right. But, which is fair enough. You can't always find what's going on. There's a lot going on in the brain. Yeah. You know, there might be something up there that you, you just never find, which is sad. Right. Right. But you mean you may never discover your full potential because you may never st never stumble across it. You may never have the means. Yeah. You, yeah. yeah. But that, that, yeah, of course, yeah. I, I only got into hospital radio because my dad was in hospital. So I found out about this thing and I thought, I didn't even know this existed. I want to go well, out Of course. Here. So, but, I mean, so it's, that's, a, there's much bigger issues there that, um, uh, the poor working class people don't get the same opportunities. Um, uh, people in the third world, when, when you're worrying about whether you're going to live through the next few days, you don't start thinking, I wonder if I can play the cello. Can I so, refer you back though, Rick? You made an interesting point there, but I fear that's not exactly what Carl was saying. I don't on. think that his point was quite uh, that profound. Yeah, that's kind of what I meant. Yeah, I don't know. There was something to do with the brain not allowing its owner. Yeah, because that's the bit that annoys me. Fair enough if a brain hasn't decided what it wants to do, because you right. What is this? Let, it, let oh, him finish. God, this is about finish. the brain Shut up. being it hasn't, in charge like the numbskulls. Because it hasn't, it hasn't found its destiny type thing. A brain but is a brain is when someone is good at something, and they know the brain is good at something, but then they don't want to do it, and they want to go off and do something else. Sorry, who's to blame here? The person or the brain? I'm talking like <laughs> him now. Wh who wrong. are you putting into room 102? What annoys you? A brain that doesn't let its owner know what it's good at, or an owner that won't do what it, the brain wants to do? I think it's the owner, because say like a bloke who's good at plumbing. Yeah. His brain loves plum plumbing. <laughs> His brain loves plumbing. <laughs> <laughs> he he's, he's sick of plumbing, um, so he goes off to try and, uh... Unplumb. No, uh, he's, he's gonna do something else. He's gonna he's, do something else. He's carpentry. Now, they say in this country the problem is we haven't got enough tradesmen. Right. We haven't got enough plumbers. Right. There's enough plumbers' brains. I don't know what the fuck that means. Shut up. Let what him are you please, talking about? Shut up. Let him please finish. Because this brains, is like, this is like brains and pillows Brains again. have not changed over the years. The brain is exactly the same. But it's the owner of the brain that's in charge. The brain could be going, I want to go for a walk, or I want to go and find something out. But if your body's too lazy to get up and go and see the stuff, the brain isn't going to get what it wants. It doesn't make what? sense, Carl. Right, you are this. your brain. Let okay, me... you could have a good point if you said this. You could say that everyone's brain has the ability to become a plumber. Yeah. Uh, you know, your brain, you know, ah, yeah. But I don't know if it has, you see, because this is the thing. When I was younger, when I first left school, I had two jobs I wanted to do. I wanted to be a joiner, right, uh, or a car mechanic. I had a go at sort of joinery, uh, couldn't really get my head around it, right. 
did work placement at a garage, messed it up, got kicked out. What did you now, do? Now the thing is- Why did you get kicked just out? Just cause I messed the garage up. What, how did you mess it up? Uh, the fella was a- he's a bit new to this fella, and he was uh, he just decorated his garage and- You are like the slug in this scenario, aren't you? He, he just- do you know how like to paint the floor and everything? Mm. Make it with lines in it and everything like that. Right, what did you do? And it was- he painted it white. You shouldn't have white in a garage. Stupid with all the oil about and that. It's not the right colour, is it? It's like getting a white sofa, you're asking for trouble. Yeah. So he'd painted it all, and then uh, he sort of said, do you want to uh, change the oil on the car? So yeah, go on then. Uh, so what do I do? He said, you pull the sump out, stick a bucket underneath, catch the oil. All right then. Go down there, pull the sump out, hold the bucket, but because of the pressure, the oil doesn't come straight out, it floats out sideways. Went all over his white floor, he went mental, kicked me out. Now the thing is, that wasn't really my fault. My brain didn't know. It was showing an interest. No, what? Right, let okay. him finish! Oh, God, what does he mean? Shut up, let the brain, my fault and my please, brain. The please brain was showing an interest, but at the end of the day, if it hasn't got the knowledge, what can it do? Now, you could say, was that my fault or my brain's fault? No, I'd never say that. People may be in the wrong job. They, we, you might not discover what you're really Yeah, but I'm talking at. about, you get people, all right, let's go to the extreme. People with no legs who want to be swimmers. Don't be stupid. <laughs> oh God! Oh God! I'm so annoyed. Oh. Is this a big problem? It's it's madness, isn't it? It's mad that the brain wants to do that so much. The brain's in the wrong in the wrong body almost. Yet, yeah. are you with me? No. A plumber, a plumber, a plumber who can plumb is annoying when he jacks it in as a living because there's other brains who can't do plumbing. They don't, don't get their head round it. Means. Look, you you must have learned the same stuff at school as me, but a lot yeah. of it wasn't interesting to my brain. I wasn't bothered. It wasn't into taking it in. Yet look at me in like editing and all that. I can use all that equipment because my brain's my brain's happy with it. Yeah, you found something you're good at. Yeah. Yeah. But why aren't I good at plumbing or joinery or being a mechanic? Because you're probably not interested in it. I was. I loved it as but a people kid. People do have different, different brains. People are different. Some oh. people are more higher logic, low yeah, emotion. That's, that's you what know? I'm saying. Yeah, but you, I don't know what you're putting in room 102 because you're saying these. It's like this brain's wandering around Who's looking for a body, and it goes, "Oh, I'll choose that body." Hang on, this body doesn't even want to do some plumbing. It's, it's a matter of taste. Sometimes it's just a matter of taste. It's good to do what you're good at and stop chasing a dream. <laughs> this is the most complicated thing. You it could is. just put in noisy kids, like Ricky. Why is this? This, this is a brain that because someone work. else would have done noisy kids. There's no point everyone putting in the same thing. But I don't brain. even know what your point is here. What I, what for example, what I put in were parents who ignore their ignore their kids running riot in a restaurant or on a train. Mm -hmm. The arrogance of them thinking that oh, aren't, isn't it fun? That there was someone to blame. I was basically putting in bad parenting, or you know, there was someone I wasn't going. A brain who wanted to be a plumber, but the not, plumber didn't. I'm not putting the brain in, it's just people, um, if I had a really good skill, I'd hope that, that I'd use it. But if I, it's you, like- You don't know what you're good at until you, till you try it. Uh You might be the best drummer in the world. I know, but they're the people I'm having a go at. They're the people who I'm having a go at. The people who know they can do something, but they don't do so it. So people who don't fulfil their own potential. That's a, that's a good one. Is that a better point? Yeah, that's what I meant. But there's nothing to do with this duality, this brain, brain versus person. I don't know what that is. It's a weird thing you've got, a really weird little kink you've got, that you think this brain is another entity that lives in your head, that you own it, and you've got to become the master of it. <laughs> like some sort of weird dog. Uh, Who am I talking to now, Carl or his brain? We're both listening. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I will put in uh, people who don't fulfil their full potential. Slugs are safe, but people who don't fulfil their full potential, you have got into room 102. Got a couple more things for room 102, Carl? My, you know my problem with me restless leg syndrome. Oh yeah. If I could put that in. Right, okay. What is this problem? The problem I've got with my legs, how they sort of come alive at night. <laughs> <laughs> and what Tap are they dancing. doing? Yeah, like yeah. bed knobs and broomsticks. Yeah. I sort of go to bed, I'm tired, and then uh, I sort of nod off for about 40, 40 odd minutes. Yeah. And then my legs go. Right. And they just, I can't sleep. It's really depressing. I think it's actually affecting me sort of health-wise. 
because I'm not sleeping right through the night. It's like I want to sleep. And what does Graham me. say? What does, um, Suzanne say? Uh, well, she's annoyed with it because she's getting loads of bruises. Mm. Kicking her. I did a little bit of research on Restless Leg Syndrome when he, um, mentioned it to me. Uh, and, uh, two little bits of information you'd be interested in, Steve. Uh, it is exacerbated and made worse by a sedentary lifestyle. Right. Lack of activity, lack of exercise, and it can be alleviated with, um, the opposite of that. Exercise, um, leading a, um, a more active lifestyle. I, which I, proves I my point. No, You're no. like a slug. I do loads of walk and I make sure I do a good walk. If anything, it's because I walk too fast because I tense my legs up when I walk. Uh, the doctor didn't say anything to do with that when I told him about ages ago. He said it was because I was eating ice cream. I don't, well, I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't because know who something that's is. in ice cream. He just is this the same doctor that said your nerves are too long? Yeah. <laughs> no, it's a different fella. This right. is the proper doctor. But, right. um, but yes, yeah, so I've cut that out and it works for a bit, but now it's got to a point where I have to go to bed and I have my legs outside of the bed. I have to put my feet on the floor. What, what? do you mean? What? I have to lie in the bed. I like normal feet position, on the floor? But I have to stick my legs out and feet on the floor. That's insane. You can't <laughs> sleep like that. Well, I do. I nod off and then maybe in the night. When I wake up, my legs are back in the bed, so either they get bored or they, or they, <laughs> uncomfy or whatever. Yeah. Or they eventually get tired. But it's kind of like, <laughs> if I have them there, it's like they think they're awake and they're being used. The only other thing I can do is if I lie on my front and then have my legs in the air. What well, I've done? Whoa! You lie in the front and have your legs in the air. Like that. Say if that's me head. Oh, like, um, like that. Like a scorpion. Like the front cover of Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Yeah, like that. If I do that, I think if I can get the blood out of my legs, they, they, they don't work the same. Mm. Is this advice from the doctor or? No, I did is that it this doctor? Is it, was he from the 12th century? No, that doctor didn't tell me to do that. I sort of did it. You and just thought that, that works. That I nodded off. Piece of well, have you, have you, have you, uh, you know, put this into the, the Royal Society of Surgeons? What? Well, this discovery that if you lay. No, it's my cure. I'll, I'll use it. It might not work for everyone. And so crazy leg syndrome is destroying your sleep. Right. And it's important to get sleep in it. If you can't sleep, it drags you down. I mean, legs, it's, it's, they just come alive at night. It's like they, they belong to a runner or something. Mm. And they want to run. And I'm going, oh, I just want to sleep. But why don't you run? Why don't you go for a run? Because it's late at night. Yeah, but go for a run in the day. Tire them it's out. fine in the day. Tire them out in the I day. Tire them out in the day. No, you don't. Go for loads of walks in the day. Loads of so walks. So if, if you were to go, you go to bed, you got restless leg syndrome. If you were to go to a run, for a run, that would cure it. I've looked it up. No. It does. I do have long, proper walks. It no, no, but if you know, it, immediately. If anything, it's like the legs like it and they want more of it. It's like a puppy. You take it for a walk and it's jumping up and down, I want more walks. Well, you can't have a walk, we had a walk earlier. Go to sleep. They're fine in the day. Whilst I'm sat here, they're not probably me. They're, they're, they're not what? They're not probably me. <laughs> okay. They're not probably me! They're, it they're makes not, up words! They're not giving me any grief whilst they're I'm sat here. They're not probably me. But when night falls, it's all gonna be different. It's like they go, I don't wanna go to sleep yet. Like it's like a little legs. kid. It's a kid who wants to stay up in case it misses something. Yeah. And that's why I just have to let them stay up. Stick them out the bed. <laughs> <laughs> I love the fact that you go to bed before your legs. Yeah. Oh, God. It's annoying. I mean, it's really, uh, Well, I don't know if I can put in your rest legs. this leg syndrome because, as I say, it can be easily cured. You could get up, you could do a bit of exercise, you could walk around, um... Yeah, but I've tried all that, Doctor, and it doesn't work. You suggest anything else. Right, uh, there's your problem. He's not a doctor. No, exactly. That's what I mean. Um... No, well, I, I'll put it in. I will put it in if you try that. Next time your legs are outside the bed, gay, say, okay, listen, I'm going to go for a run. Put on a sweatshirt. No, because he's Put always, on some shorts. It's always late at night. I'm not yeah. going out. It's dangerous. Well, you go to bed at half eleven. Yeah. Go yeah. for a run at half eleven. Half eleven. Fifteen minutes. Mm. So, are they going in or not? No, no, because you, you're not... I... I, I, I I'm not sure that you're doing everything for it. What's your next thing to try and get in room 102? It's a tricky one, this. Go on. It's, it's people who, um, who think that humans are special. Do you know what I mean? But you think that. No, I don't. I don't think humans are special. I but think what? some of us are. I think you get the odd one who, who creates something. 
and uh, you know you go oh, that's amazing. But the way we say the human race is amazing, no, it isn't. A small percentage of it is. There's a load of numbnuts. <laughs> and it annoys me how people say the human race did this human race. No, it didn't. Let's name them because there's only a few people who have done stuff that matters. Is that what you think? Yeah, definitely. We just start. Well, we think we're good, and we're not. We're but, just... uh, well, who matters? Uh, just before we get onto your point, so you're putting in the rest of the human race. No, just people who say that that they're good. People who have said that statement that. Isn't the human race an amazing thing? So Again, anyone who's ever said, isn't the human race amazing, yeah, yeah, goes I'd, in room 102. Yeah, I'd say don't be stupid. So most of the human race is going in? Uh, well, have you ever said it? Well, I think, the, I, think all, I think all species are amazing. But when people say the human race, they sort of mean... They think what you mean, the, 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 that you can go... The great people. The, the great art, ones. you know, inventors, the things that were... You know, that we've, we've... And how is the human race not amazing? Because we don't, we're not needed to keep this, this planet going. We're an added thing that we're was added on later. the food later. chain, yeah, that's right, yeah. We were added last. Yeah. It's like, there's some room left, what we do? Stick some humans but on But don't forget, we, we, this thing of we being added doesn't make sense, because it was a process. There was no yeah. point when someone said, we don't need this, let's stop now. We kept, we kept mutating and being selected. Yeah, I know, but sometimes you can keep, it's, it's going back to what we were talking about last time about, uh, you've got a house, you fill it with stuff. At some point, yeah. you've got everything you need. You've right. got your kettle, you've got your fridge, you've yeah, got but your telly. Just, you're gonna stop at slugs, then it'll be fine. Gone, I'm buying this. But no, no, ornament. nothing, but nothing needed anything. Yeah, it did. It, the world needed, I mean, okay, I tried to put slugs in, you didn't allow them in. Yeah. Fair play to the slugs. They must do something somewhere. Yeah. Just not in my house. But, but it could have stopped at slugs. They got it right. What, 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 what's this thing that you need anything else? The slug evolved, it, you know, it, it... No, but we don't add anything, do we? All we've done since we've been around is mess up the world. That's true. Yeah. So yeah. I'm saying we're not needed. I don't know what the last thing was that was needed. No, we're not needed. We're not needed. Yeah. So what was the last thing? Before. Doesn't make any sense. What was the last thing that was invented by nature? It's Carl, arbitrary, it's a stupid what question. What do you mean? It's not a stupid question. Everything is just happening, it's evolving now. The right, look at it like this, you say, I think, we think we're important because yeah. we just do. Well, I don't, but some do. And they're the ones what I'll get rid of. <laughs> <laughs> Another argument with himself. Now, we think we're special, there might be something else going on that's more important. We're in this universe, aren't we? Yeah. They try to make a new universe. What do you mean? There's a machine somewhere. What? A big bang. They're making a big bang again. Right. Well, that you've got that completely wrong, but sure. They're not trying to create a new world. They're trying to recreate the conditions that happened at the beginning of the big bang. They're not trying to recreate a new world. All right. So they, but the it's world completely came, different. But the world came from the big bang. Yeah, they're trying to recreate the conditions so they can test and they can experiment to see dangerous. the conditions before. Yes, it is dangerous. Apparently, there is a threat. There, admittedly, there is a danger, yeah. very small danger that they could create a black hole that would destroy the world. That so why are they true. doing that? Who's allowed that? <laughs> This is what annoys me, it's because humans think they're special. Oh, who made the Big Bang? Oh, I'd like my name on that. I want to <laughs> claim it. Why do people always want to better someone else? It's happened, let them have it. Well, don't you, what you said about progress, you're trying to change time. Yeah, but that's not going to harm anyone, a Big Bang. I just don't, I, I don't think we need, I mean, we haven't filled this universe yet. Have we? The, but the, what you about, I don't know what you're saying, you're contradicting yourself. Every other sentence contradicts what you said last time. You do want to fill it, you don't want to fill it. We haven't filled this universe, we don't need another one. We do want progress, we don't want progress. I'm Carl, saying, what do you want? I'm saying we don't want another universe. Well, no, no. We haven't got our head round this one yet. We're we don't not know trying where to create everything a new is. one, but go on. Don't create a new one. We're not trying to, no is one's that, trying is, to. Is that your philosophy? Don't create a new universe. <laughs> But why are it's we looking at that? It's a giant research experiment. Why it's, are they're we not trying to create that? a new universe. Why are we looking at that then? Why do we want to go back today, Dot? So that we can better understand the world that we live in, how we, the world evolved into the position we're in now. If it did indeed start with the Big Bang, what were the conditions? How did it come from nothing into something? That's what we do. We say why and how. I know, and but when, sometimes. It, and what next? And I, is it good? You know, I don't mind asking questions. I like asking questions. Is Ask yours question. are where are slugs going? But it's just this thing of faffing about with things that are. They don't know what they're doing. Okay, right, okay, Carl, you're in charge of the world now. You are this, you're, you're all-powerful. You're like a god, okay? You can do anything. You go, you call all the scientists, and they go, what do you want of us? Oh, oh, orange-headed one. What the fuck do you want of us? Right? Right. 
Stop the Big Bang research. Stop it now. Mm. Okay? Okay, drop your talk. Okay, good. Throw that away. What do you want them to do? The might, the might of every intellect in the world standing before you, as far as you can see. <whistles> Hello? Listen, everybody. This is what I want you to work on. Go. What do you say? Uh... Well, I want, I want to come in and... How long have they been working on the Big Bang idea? Forget it. It just, you've got every science... No, but I don't word. just want to come in and, and poo-poo that, because they're going to... Poo-poo. They've, they've done a lot of research well, on Hold it. on. You, you wanted to stop a minute ago. Yeah, I know, but you don't just come in, guns are blazing. I'd say, I'd say, hello, everyone. You can everyone. do anything you want. Oh, go on, go on yeah, Hello, everyone. Hello, Carl, leader. Right, uh, listen. Um, this Big Bang thing you've been doing... Yeah, well, uh, that's just only a few of us. That's like less than a millionth of a percent of us. We're all here. Yeah. I've dropped AIDS research. I've dropped cancer research. Right, well, why have you dropped that? I'm working Who's on told you... you to do that? Well, no, we just, well, we knocked off. They said you wanted to tell us something. We're all here. Every scientist in the world well, is listen, here. Well, listen, where are you from again? Uh, well, I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter. I'm from Cornwall. I'm, I'm looking no, what, at... No, what research are you doing? Oh, well, uh, I'm looking at, um, uh, what happens if you give Feminax to an owl. What happens? Well, I'm halfway through it. You, I got called away. Look, I'm really busy. What do you want me to work on? Who said they're doing cancer? Hey. Go back. Go back to work. Cheers. <laughs> right. Okay. The rest of us I've doing got... stuff that you think we're fanning around with, what would you want us Listen, to do? Listen, well, I can't do it all today. What about me? I was doing AIDS. Hang on a minute. I was doing AIDS. You just wait a minute. Right, okay. Why does cancer get to go back? Are you saying that cancer's a bigger problem than AIDS? Well, you go back to work. So I'm going to go back. I'm doing... Oh... I'm doing restless legs. Right, syndrome. can everybody but the Big Bang people leave? <laughs> <laughs> well, we've come to an end of um, episode two of series five of the Ricky Gervais show. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Thank you. And Carl Pilkington. All right. I was working on cold sores. Fuck off.